So this video is going, going to explain how you construct your equation from your results if you've got a straight line graph. Now just one note, when you start trying to analyze your graph, it is important that you have a line of best fit to start with. Never ever join the dots. This is not acceptable at this level. Okay, so we're going to be starting off with a beautiful line of best fit which goes through most or all of the points and as close to them all as possible. <laughs> um, what we need to find is the equation of the line. Now this is something you would have come across in mathematics. The equation of the line is usually expressed as y equals ax plus b or sometimes it's y equals mx plus b etc. But generally what that means is that the y-axis um, value is equal to the gradient of the line or the slope of the line times the position on the x-axis plus the intercept. So the two really important points that we have to get from our graph are the slope or gradient and the intercept on the y-axis. Now I'm going to go over how to do this by hand initially because for your uh, paper three you would need to be able to demonstrate that you can do this. So it's a skill that you need to be able to demonstrate very clearly. This is how we work out the slope of the line so we can get that part of the equation. You have to choose two points on the best fit line. On the line, not the points that you've plotted. As soon as you draw a best fit line, what you're doing is disregarding your plotted points. Those aren't important anymore. The relationship that you are plotting is governed by this, the line, not the points. So you have to find two points on here, on the line, and you have to make them as far away as reasonable. This distance here must be greater than half of the entire line right so don't pick two little points that are close together pick two points that are far apart also choose points that are easy to read right so don't go pointing something that's in between two divisions choose something that will be straightforward and easy to read here so we've got six for example there and along here as well we've got an easy point to read okay so to do the calculation actually write down the points so this was if this wasn't a paper three you would be graded on demonstrating that you can actually do this process here so the slope is calculated by the rise over the run so therefore your rise in this case would be 230 which is this reading here minus 70 that gives you your rise that's your rise and now we need to find the run which is 44 minus 4, which is this point here, okay? I thought it was 6, but it looks like it's 4. Okay, so 44 minus 4. That gives us 160 divided by 40, which gives us a final slope of 4. This needs to be evident. You need to show you're working out because it's very, very diff. I mean, you might find that you make a minor mistake here, but if the examiner can see this working out, they will be generous and award you credit for it. Okay, so that's, that's now in our equation, we have the A part, the slope or gradient. So, so far we've got Y equals 4X. So what is this B part? You probably recognize that this is the intercept with the Y axis. Our intercept is when x equals 0, what would the value be on the y-axis? So you would literally have to read that off. Now this is why it's sometimes difficult to have a false origin, right? If you don't have this part of the graph and you've actually plotted it, it can give you some, um, it can be difficult to then work it out. Do not use maths to try and find this point, right? Don't use the equation of the line or these plotted points to find it substituting. Some people substitute these values in to the equation um, and try and calculate this. Don't, you've got a graph, use it. You must demonstrate that you can use a graph to find the intercept. So you read it and here you can see it's about 57, right? So that's your intercept. So that gives us a full equation. We now have y equals 4x plus 57. 
Now, final point, we're not doing maths, we're doing real science, we're doing stuff. So your graph actually is probably about two physical quantities. Here we've expressed it as graph of this versus that, but it could be force on acceleration, for example, or it could be temperature on magnetic field strength. So finally, you have a graph that's about physical quantities. Y could be the effect of um, magnetic field strength on temperature. So it could be um, the magnetic field strength equals four times temperature plus 57. Or it could be that the acceleration of a particular car equals four times its mass plus 57. So we're actually describing the relationship between physical quantities that we spoke about at the beginning. And you can come up with this kind of equation if you've got a lovely straight line. What we'll talk about in the next video is what do we do when we don't have a straight line?